The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life by Drunvelo Melchizedek, Volume 1 Chapter 4 The Aborted Evolution of Consciousness and the Creation of the Christ Grid The Solution, a Christ Consciousness Grid Ascended Masters assist the Earth At the time of the synthetic Merkabah failure, there were about 1,600 Ascended Masters on Earth and they did everything they could to try to heal the situation. They tried to seal the dimensional levels and get as many of these spirits as they could out of people and back into their own worlds. They did everything on every level they could. They eventually get most of the spirits out and healed about 90 to 95 percent or more of the situation but people still found many of these unusual beings living in their bodies. The situation at that time began to deteriorate extremely rapidly. All the systems on Atlantis, financial, social and all the concepts of how life ought to be, degenerated and collapsed. The continent of Atlantis and all its people became sick. They started getting weird diseases. The entire continent went into a state of survival just trying to live through each day. The situation grew continually worse. For a long period of time it was hell on earth, horrible. If it had not been slowed down by the ascended masters, it would truly have been the end of this world. The ascended masters, the highest levels of our consciousness at that time didn't know what to do to help bring us back into a state of grace. I mean they really didn't know what to do. They were children compared to the events that had been forced upon them, and they had no idea how to handle it. So they prayed. They called in higher levels of consciousness. They called in everybody who could hear their plea, including the great galactic command. They prayed and prayed. So the problem was reviewed on many high levels of life. Similar kinds of events have happened before on other planets. This wasn't the first time. So before it actually happened, our ascended masters and galactic friends knew that we were going to fall out of grace, out of the high level of awareness we were experiencing at the time. They knew that we were going to fall way down the spectrum of life. Their concern was to figure out some way to get us back up on track after the fall, and they knew it had to be done quickly. They were looking for a solution that would heal the whole earth both the dark and the light. They weren't concerned with a solution where only the Martians would be healed or only the Lemurians or only part of the earth, they were looking for a situation that would heal the whole earth and all of its inhabitants. Higher levels of consciousness don't go along with this us and them point of view. There's only one consciousness moving through all life, and they were trying to get everybody to come back into a state of love and respect for each other. They knew that the only way they could do it was to get us back into Christ consciousness, a level of beingness where we can see the unity and they knew we would proceed from there with love and compassion. They knew that if we were going to get back on track, we would have to be in Christ consciousness as a planet by the end of the 13,000 year cycle, which is now. If we were not in Christ consciousness by then, we wouldn't make it at all. We would destroy ourselves. Although spirit is eternal, life interruptions can be temporarily lost. Note. For those of you who believe that we will be out of this dimension before 2012, you are probably right. The correction to this Atlantean field, even though the earth will probably be in at least the fourth dimension by then, will be completed in the third dimensional year, according to Thoth. The only problem was that we couldn't get back to Christ consciousness by ourselves, at least in a short time. Once we had fallen to this level it would be a very, very long time before we would be able to come back up naturally. So the problem was really one of time. We were part of a greater consciousness that loved us, and out of love it wished to assist us back into conscious immortality as soon as possible. It would be much like having a child who hit his head real hard, resulting in a concussion. You would want him to return to consciousness quickly. It was finally decided to try a kind of standard operating procedure that usually works in these situations, though not always. In other words, it was an experiment. Earth's people were about to be subjects of a galactic experimental project in the hope of helping us. We would experiment on ourselves. It wasn't done by extraterrestrials or anything like that. They simply showed us how to do it. We were given instructions on how to proceed with this experiment, and we actually carried it out. Successfully. What about the Syrians? Our helpers honestly believed that we would make it, though they knew it would be close. In fact, 
they wouldn't have gotten permission from the galactic command to do the experiment if they hadn't honestly believed we would make it. You can't lie to the galactic command. A planetary grid. At this point, so that you'll understand the procedure they decided on, I need to talk about grids. A planetary grid is an etheric crystalline structure that envelops the planet and holds the consciousness of any one species of life. Yes, it does have an electromagnetic component associated with the third dimension but it also has an appropriate higher dimensional component for each dimension. Science will eventually discover that there's a grid for every single species in the world. There were originally 30 million grids around the earth, but now there are about 13 to 15 million, and they're decreasing rapidly. If there are just two bugs on the planet, and they're just sitting somewhere in Iowa, they have a grid that stretches around the entire planet, or they couldn't exist. It's just the nature of the game. Each of these grids has its own geometry and is unique. There's not another one like it. Just as a species body is unique, its point of view of interpreting the reality is also unique. The Christ consciousness grid holds the Christ consciousness for the planet, and if that grid isn't there, we can't reach Christ consciousness. This grid was there during Atlantean times, though we were very young and it was beginning to function at certain times during the precession of the equinoxes. They knew it would be placed into a passive state by the Martians actions, so they decided to synthetically activate the Christ consciousness grid around the earth. It would be a living grid, but it would be synthetically made, like creating a synthetic crystal from a living cell of a live crystal. Then at the right time, hopefully before we killed ourselves off, the new grid would be complete and we could ascend to our previous level once again. One example of the effect of a grid is shown in the hundredth monkey theory. The hundredth monkey concept. You have probably read the book, The Hundredth Monkey by Ken Keyes, Jr., or perhaps the earlier book of Lael Watson, Life Tide, The Biology of the Unconscious, who describe a 30-year scientific research project on the Japanese monkey, Makako Fuscata, the island of Koshima, Japan has a wild colony and the scientists were providing them with sweet potatoes dropped in the sand. The monkeys liked the sweet potatoes, but not the sand and dirt. An 18-month-old female they named Emo found she could solve the problem by washing the potatoes. She taught this trick to her mother. Her playmates also learned this new way, and they taught their mothers, too. Soon all the young monkeys washed their sweet potatoes, but only the adults who imitated their children learned this behavior. The scientists recorded these events between the years 1952 and 1958. Then suddenly, in the autumn of 1958, the few monkeys doing this on the island of Koshima reached a critical mass, which Dr. Watson arbitrarily placed at 100, and bingo! Almost every monkey on the island started washing its potatoes without any further influence. If it had happened on only that one island, they probably would have figured there was some form of communication and looked for it. But simultaneously the monkeys on the surrounding islands also started washing their potatoes. Even on the mainland of Japan in Takasakiyama the monkeys were washing their potatoes. There was no possible way these monkeys could have communicated by any way we know. It was the first time that scientists had ever observed anything like this. They postulated that there must have been some kind of morphogenetic structure or field that stretched across these islands through which the monkeys were able to communicate. The hundredth human. Many people thought a lot about the hundredth monkey phenomenon. Then a few years later a scientific team from Australia and Britain wondered if human beings possessed a grid similar to the monkeys. They did an experiment, they made a photograph that had hundreds of human faces in it, little ones and big ones, faces in the eyes. Everything was made up of these faces. But when you first looked at it, you could see only about six or seven. It took training to see the other ones. Usually someone had to first point out where they were. These people took their picture to Australia and conducted a study there. They selected a certain number of people from a spectrum of the population, then showed each of them the picture, giving them a certain length of time to look at it. They held the photograph up to someone and said, how many faces do you see in this photo? During the time the subjects were given, they would generally come up with six, seven, eight, 
nine or maybe ten faces. Few people saw more. When they had gotten a few hundred people as their basic sampling and recorded accurately what had been observed, some of the researchers went to England, on the other side of the planet, and showed the picture on a closed cable BBC television station that broadcasts only to England. They carefully showed where all the faces were, every single face. Then a few minutes later other researchers repeated the original experiment with new subjects in Australia. Suddenly people could easily see most of the faces. From that moment, they knew for certain that there was something about humans that had not been known. Now, the Aborigines in Australia had known all about this unknown part of us for a long time. They knew that there was an energy field connecting people, even in our society. We've observed that somebody on one side of the planet would invent something very complex at the same moment that someone on the other side of the earth invented the same thing, with the same principles and ideas. Each inventor would say, you stole it from me, it was mine, I did it first. This has happened many, many times, stretching back for a long time. So after this Australian experiment, they began to realize that something very definitely connects us all. The government's discovery of the grid and the race for control. As far back as the early 1960s, the American and Russian governments had discovered these electromagnetic fields, or grids, that stretched around the world. Human grids, yes, there are more than one, are high above the earth, about 60 miles or more. Remember, I told you about the five levels of consciousness on earth that correspond to different numbers of genes and different heights. Well, there are only three levels of consciousness that earth is actually experiencing right now. Two others are way beyond us at this time. The first level is primal. The second level is our present consciousness, and the third level is the Christ or unity consciousness, the one we're about to enter. After the fall, about 13,000 years ago, there were only two active human grids around the earth, the first and the second levels. The aborigines in Australia were on the first level, for example, and we, the mutants, were on the second level. That's what they call us, mutants because we mutated to where we are now, science has done very little research on the Australian Aborigines, so our countries haven't become aware of their grid. But the governments did a lot of research on us, and they discovered exactly what our grid looks like, it's based on triangles and squares. It's a very male grid that stretches around the whole planet. Now, we have a third grid up there, which we will call the Unity Consciousness Grid, or simply the next step. It's been there completed, since February 4, 1989. Without that grid, it would be all over for us, folks. But it is there. The governments became originally aware of our second level grid maybe as far back as the 1940s. I realize that this statement is in contradiction to what was said above, but nevertheless I believe that the grid was discovered even before the hundredth monkey theory came out, because of World War II. The governments were beginning to place military bases all over the world in little out of the way places, on obscure islands like Guam. Why did they select these particular places for their bases? It probably wasn't for the reasons they said. When you lay out the grid and the military bases all over the world, especially those of Russia and the United States, well, son of a gun, the bases are almost always located right on the nodal points of the grid exactly over the top or on little spirals that come off of the nodal points. It could not possibly have been a coincidence that they just happened to spread out their empire of military bases in these precise places. They were trying to take control of this grid, because if they could control it, they knew they could control what we think and feel. A subtle war was going on between these two governments. However, the war changed its nature considerably in 1970. They'll have to explain that later. Of course, behind both the United States and Russia was the secret government, which controlled the outer appearance and timing of this conflict. How the grid was constructed, and where. Now that we have the necessary background, we can continue with the drama in Atlantis. The project to rebuild the grid was begun by three men, Thoth, a being named Ra and a being named Araragat. These men flew to a place in what is now Egypt. To the area now called the Giza Plateau. At that time it was not a desert, but a tropical rainforest, 
and it was called the land of Chem, which means the land of the hairy barbarians. The three men went to that particular place because the axis of the old unity consciousness grid extended out of the earth from that point. They were going to rebuild a new grid on the old axis, according to instructions given by higher consciousness. They had to wait until the right moment, until the procession of the equinoxes passed the low ebb in consciousness, before they could act and this low ebb was still far into their future, after that they would have a little less than half a cycle, about 12,900 years or so, to complete everything by the end of the 20th century. We couldn't go any longer than this or we would destroy ourselves and our planet. First they had to complete the grid on the higher dimensions, then they had to physically build the temples in this dimension before the new unity grid would manifest. Once manifested and balanced, they were to help us begin to consciously move into the higher worlds of being and begin a new our path home to God. So Thoth and friends went to the very spot where the unity consciousness vortex exited the earth. This point was about a mile away from where the great pyramid sits in the desert today, but then it was out in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a rain forest. Centered right over the axis of this vortex on the earth, they created a hole extending approximately one mile into the earth lining it with bricks. It took only a few minutes or so, because they were sixth dimensional beings, and whatever they thought always happened. It was that simple. Once the hole aligned with the unity axis was created, they mapped the ten golden mean spirals that emerged from the hole and located where they moved above the earth. They used the hole as the axis, starting far down and mapped the spirals of energy as they moved up out of the hole and extended into space. One of the spirals exited the earth not far from the present great pyramid. Once they found it, they built a little stone building in front of the hole, that building is the key to the entire Jizza complex. Then they built the great pyramid. According to Thoth, the great pyramid was built by himself, not Cheops. Thoth says that it was completed about 200 years prior to the shifting of the axis. The apex of the Great Pyramid, if the capstone were in place, sat exactly on the curve of the spiral. They lined up the center of the hole with the south face of the stone building and the north face of the Great Pyramid. It has amazed surveyors who have looked at this. Though these structures are a mile away from each other, the south face of the stone building and the north face of the Great Pyramid are in perfect alignment. They do not believe that we could do it any better today even with our modern technology. Later the other two pyramids were also built directly on that spiral. In fact, that's how the hole was discovered, through aerial photography. They noticed that the three pyramids were laid out on a logarithmic spiral. Then they traced the spiral back to its source and went to that spot and there was the hole and the stone building. That discovery was made, I believe, in the early 1980s. It was recorded in the McCullum survey that was completed in 1984 by Rocky McCullum. I've seen the Axis hole and the building with my own eyes. I consider it to be the most important place in all of Egypt and so does the Edgar case. A.R.E. There's also another hole about a city block away from the first spiral, and this spiral starts out a little differently, but then slowly, asymptotically, superimposes itself over the first spiral. To be able to build around this hole in this spiral pattern, the planners had to have a very sophisticated understanding of life. I'll explain this understanding later also, so these two completed spirals defined the axis of what would eventually become the unity consciousness grid around the earth.